Oh, what a mess. Let me... Ah, oh, much better. So here's the situation. The bench is big and we need to remodel this studio. First thing, we need space for 3D printers. I've got at least nine waiting for unboxing. And I'm thinking one big cabinet there for all of them. And second, we need more filament storage. We've got a lot of boxes. This one's from Aurapol. There's more piles and more filament boxes back there and lots of printers. So we'll make four shelf units for those. Then we need some material. These are the parts for the cabinet. Let me assemble it. We've got a cabinet. I already loaded it with some boxes to free up the floor and also check for strength. It's bigger than I imagined, but it fits well. There will definitely be six 3D printers down here. And these two will be sitting on the top. I won't be moving it much, but it's got seven caster wheels just in case. And it's not finished, we'll get to it a bit later. First, we need some space for all that filament. Well, this is not a tutorial and you shouldn't follow it. I think we can agree that breaking the drill bit is not a good strategy. We're out of juice. Let's fix something else while charging. We don't have any door handles yet. There's large open space inside, so I can split it into three or two, depending on the size of the printer. So I need these, I don't know how they're called, to bear the weight. And there's the wheels at the bottom. These are just temporary and I want to replace them. I could use some profiles. Or I've got this square pipe that looks better but needs to be foiled or painted. So which one do you want? You want the profile? Really? How about these square ones? And we need some caps for the ends. I've got this old cap model. And I modified it like this. Now let's cut the profiles. It's printing. Let's see if it works. Let's see. Well, I think I made them too tall. I guess the easiest is to reprint thinner fit. And they're ready. Let's try the new ones. Let's see. All right, back to shelves. Battery is charged. These are just so I know which part is which. So this guy goes behind door number one. Well, I guess I need to move that and cut a bit here from the back so it goes against the wall. And... Ta-da! A bit of cleaning. We need some covers. Almost matching. And the lines are almost there. Let's see. I can fit at least eight spools. That's 64 total here. I also want to prevent this from happening. <coughs> We got some D-shaped adhesive gasket.
But this is not enough. There's another. These shelves fit 56 more spools and they go behind the crazy table. And like magic, whoops, I calculated something wrong, almost fits. Well, the table is sagging. No one's gonna know. Works like magic. Ta-da. I moved all my PTG here and ha, there's room left. What's with the boxes? Oh, looks good back there. It's the next day, by the way. And we've got two shelves, but there's more. These ones are easy, I'll just... These are the last units, I promise. And they go in the hallway. Ta-da! And they are full. Now onto the printer cabinet which is more of a 3D printer enclosure, really. We need power for all the printers. And because I want to film here, I want this to look somewhat clean, so not a lot of cables. And the cleanest I can think of is drill three holes and get the cables out the back. And here at the back, we'll have all the power outlets. We got these drill cores. Should I just use the largest one? Yeah, we'll go with the largest one and cover the hole with a print. Ta-da! It's quite hot. Is it a bit large? Nah. All right, six holes. And I think this drill core reached end of life with these six holes. It barely worked on the last one. Anyways, mission accomplished. I hopped into Fusion and quickly designed this cover and now I have to test it. I don't have this exact color, so we'll go with Fibrology Onyx, which is a black with glitter. Hopefully it'll match. What happened here? I designed this part to fit in the holes. There's another piece that goes at the back. I can fit plugs in. Perhaps another one. I've got this cover that covers some of the hole. And if I wanted to cover even more, I can add a second one and then close the gap even further. And I've got a second design. This, by the way, goes even further down. I can add this turret look. This was my brother's idea. So this way, when you look from the front, there's no hole to see, just these two cables. And it gets even smaller, well, slightly smaller. And there's still this partial cover. And the last one, which is also my brother's idea, was to have this mushroom-like shape. So again, looking from the front, there's just a little bit of a hole for the cables to come out. And I can adjust this for more cables or fewer cables. And I think I like this one best, so we'll use it. Of course, if I need to open it, I don't even need this part anymore for this one. And then pass the cables through and cover back. So this was a fun, tiny project. I'll share the files if people need it. Making more. In the meantime, I've got this cob strip. Let's test it. Looks nice. I've got enough for two rows to go like that. And I already got some aluminum to mount underneath to help with heat dissipation. Now we need to cut them to length and paint them. I think I changed my mind on the paint because spray painting is messy and this won't be visible up here anyways. Yeah. I 
I like this connector so I'll keep it. I suppose this is not how you cut it. I should remind you that everything I do in this video is extremely dangerous. You shouldn't take it as advice and you shouldn't follow it. I have to tell you this because some people tend to follow videos. So I'm just here telling you that you take all the responsibility so that it's your fault when you get injured or get someone else injured. Okay. Oh, look at that. I've got silicone glue. Well, this doesn't look very professional, which is the point, because if it doesn't look professional, nobody's gonna dare touch it. Oh, great. I made it too short. Well, I'm gonna pretend it's fine. I got this for power supply. Looks like it's working. Wait, did I break it already or no? I may have swapped the lines and now I can't take this off. Hmm. Got new wires from a stepper motor. Looks a bit sketchy. I should perhaps check for shorts at least. Seems fine. Let's see. Ta-da! I fixed it. Well, I did a bit more improvising. Probably not my best work. The silicone I used before for the ends prevented me to resolder it, so I had to move to the next soldering point. Now the lights work. This is not a final position for the power supply. It goes at the back. All right, mains go here. Lights go up here. I'm making some power strip mounts. Power strip mounts are ready. This is filamentum PTG. Came out pretty well. We've got a switch. Remote switch. We're not gonna talk about this. Let's strip power supply. Well, well, so much for my LED mount. I guess this double-sided tape is not very double-sided. I put it back. We had a talk adult to adult and we established it won't fall anymore. And I also added a little screw back there to make sure. Well, I don't have a mount here. Oh, I do have a mount. And now time to mount all these. Now we've got power and ta -da! now these brackets you can't see them much but i'd like to cover them so let's try something i designed this cover i have a bit of a misalignment new version dude this keep failing hmm there's one sticky tape here and another one there and somehow they don't like each other. Anyways, let's check this. Looking good. It's great. Now I need 15 more. Okay, how many times is this going to fail? Well, some of them fit, but not all of them. I need larger. I've got the new ones. This one fits. Well, it turns out this one is still not fitting. The size of these things is all over the place. Let's try force it. I call that fixed. And I installed the other three. I had to hammer that one a bit. And now, behind the printers, there's this backdrop that I normally use, which won't have room anymore, because printers will go up to there. So it is coming off and swapping places with all that sound treatment there. So everyone out. I cover the entire wall, seems to fit well. This will help a lot with reverb. I might cover it with some dark fabric in the future. But now, to mount the backdrop, the lighthouse is in the way. I 
I forgot to film the drilling, but the holes are there, I promise. Ta-da! Backdrop. Now we need the lighthouse back for the VR. And now the bench goes there. Meanwhile, up here we keep having this problem. Let's improvise something. These are not made for wood. So let's try it. Well, it's not perfect, but it's gonna stay there. I guess the metal band was too heavy. I like this light, makes everything look nice. Let's test with the printer. Well, I don't have a big printer right now, but I think the small one fits. All right, I still don't have the lights for the bottom shelf, but I call this one finished. We do have some spare parts that were not good. I'm gonna send them to recycling. But for now, I'm happy with this shelf and I think it's ready to receive printers. We're gonna have a lot of unboxing to do. Here's the little guy down there for reference. I'm testing to see if it can bear the load. I've got three more, but these are too heavy to lift. See you at the unboxing, I guess. Until then, bump into the like button and stay awesome.